Alright, let's talk about client-side programming and JavaScript. JavaScript is uh, a scripting language um, run in the browser. It's dynamic, so we don't compile it. Um, it's loosely typed, so we don't have to declare what type of variables we have. And it can be used for uh, multiple purposes. We can either use it uh, as an object-oriented language, as a functional or imperative like um, um, functional, sorry, so functional like uh, closure or uh, lists. It's used for a lot of things, like I said, uh, client side, obviously. You get access to your elements. We can uh, programmatically change how your web page looks, make uh, API calls in the browser. Um, you can also use it on the server side and. Uh, Servers like Node.js, um, I use it uh, for Grunt to uh, optimize my JavaScript before I uh, put it um, on a server. And then um, at Noesis, we actually use MongoDB, which is a JavaScript-based uh, database. You can use it in OpenOffice or Adobe to um, automate things. In Photoshop, you can auto batch process, and that uses JavaScript. Um, same with uh, Dreamweaver. And then um, WinJS has uh, a pretty neat platform for creating JavaScript apps that are uh, compatible across computers, uh, mobile phones, etc. All right, let's get into some of the basics. JavaScript. Like I said before, variables, we don't have to declare what type they are. So um, if I say variable my string equals high, then we just have to know that my string is a string. Um, numbers, there's only one number type, it's number. There's no floats or doubles, so a number is a number. And there is no Boolean type. So I'm sorry, boolean is a reserved word, but uh, there's a bool type. We just don't uh, need to declare it as such. Don't create a variable without the var. You notice that uh, all these statements have this, and what that means is that this variable is being declared within the context or the scope of the JavaScript that I'm working in right now, if you declare it without var, it's global. It means anywhere you can access that. If you're so if you're running a browser and you declare it without var, any of your scripts can access that variable, which means that any of your scripts can clobber that variable and overwrite it with whatever data they want to, which leads to bad, bad things. <coughs> Alright. So <coughs> we talked about some types. If we type into, uh, we've created a variable, var, my string equals high. Uh, if we said type of my string, it would tell us it is indeed a string. Um, same thing with the number. It would tell us it's a number. If you said type of five, it would say number. Here's where it gets weird, though. The type of this, which, which we would use to instantiate an array, it will say object. Type of null, null is an object. Not a number is a number, but not a number can't add it to any other number will give you not a number. So um, it's not really a good test for not a number. All right, let's move on to functions. Functions, um, like almost everything in JavaScript, are objects. Um, they can be anonymous, which means that we don't need to say, we don't need to give the function a name. We can say um, var, um, var function equals, or var f equals function, and uh, that will store a reference to the function in the variable f. We can uh, create other functions within functions. And that's usually not a, a good idea, because it's, especially if you do it in a loop, and then you're creating functions um, at 
random and you might not know it. Um, functions are closures, so they have their own scope. Um, that's what likens it to a, uh, a functional language. Um, and functions have are, are inherit from prototypes, but we'll talk about that uh, later. Here's the basic function syntax. Function foo, here we've named it foo. Uh, and we're just going to, this is how in the browser you would uh, print out hello world. So if you opened up Google Chrome and you opened up developer tools and you typed uh, console log uh, hello world in there and hit enter, then uh, it would print out hello world. This is the same thing here as, sorry, as if we were to type var foo equals function. It's, the, it's a shorthand basically and uh, it will be converted to this behind the scenes. Uh, function arguments are primitives. The primitives and function arguments are always passed by value. If you pass an object, it's passed by reference. So here we have a uh, function. We're storing the reference of function in test, and it has a couple arguments, a and b an object. Um, so here, <coughs> I'm going to look at uh, how this function uh, passing works, or argument passing works. So we have object modified equals true, and then we're going to print out the arguments, which will actually print these out. Um, var object equals an object, so we've instantiated a, uh, an object called obj. Um, now we're just going to try to print out this right here, and object doesn't have any uh, any uh, a, a modified uh, object inside of it. So now we're going to run this function test. We're sending a primitive uh, number and a string, and the object that we've created. And now once it's passing here. We set the modify to true. Basically, that will actually create a key value pair of modified and true, just like here. Um, and then it's this is what the output of console.log arguments would be. Now, when we come back from that function, if we um, test this again, you can see that object.modified is true because we passed it by reference. The scope of a function is static. Um, we can create... The scope is uh, in the context of where it was created. It maintains its own context. The arguments in that function, and when they pass in, they become part of that scope. And the scope of any function created in there will have a reference to the parent scope. However, the uh, this is not scope. You should not, when you use the the word this or the variable this, we'll get a clear picture of that now. We have this function that uh, we basically want to have a function that just um, accumulates. So adds 1 and 1 and 1 and 1 and gives us a sum. And we're using this here. <coughs> and uh, you would think that this would refer to uh, this function, this, but it does not. So we're going to pass it 1, and we should get 1. And we pass it another 1, and we get 2. 1 and 1 is 2. Um, now we want to just uh, check out what accumulator.sum is. You would think it would be 2, but it's not. It's undefined. However, sum turns out to be 2 as because this 
refers to the global scope by default. So in the browser, this would refer to the window, the window object, actually. Objects are dynamic. We can create them on the fly. They're non-ordered uh, key value pairs. Um, they can have you can access them like you'd access an array. You can access them like you'd access an object. They're iterable. Created at one time, so um, dynamic, obviously. Um, the object literal is the uh, curly braces. We can't control privacy, so it's not like a, a Java class. They have tr prototypal inheritance, and you can use uh, constructor constructor functions to make them behave like a Java class without the privacy stuff. So here's a simple object, and we've seen this before. Bar ob equals the curly braces, um, and this is kind of the same thing as the modify equals true, where you have object, and then we'll, uh, this is the uh, key, and the value is um, simple object. So we can access this by object.name, or object uh, name like you would an array. All right, a couple special operators. Um, plus, uh, as a binary operator, we'll add um, numbers, as obviously, and it will concatenate string. Um, also, oddly enough, if you would have one here in uh, as a string and added it to two, and possibly uh, let's say two, add it to two, the number two and another number two, it would turn out to be five. It would actually convert um, the one to a number. I'm not sure if it would do it if, if you only have two, but it will. if you have more numbers than strings, it will assume you uh, meant string. You can use it as a unary operator, actually, to change the type. So here you see plus the string one equals one. Um, in most programming languages, you would use uh, a double equals to um, for equality checking. Um, in JavaScript, you can do that, but um, when you do that, it will actually try to attempt uh, type conversion, and that can lead to some unexpected results. So make sure you know what all your variable types are, and um, use the um, triple equal and uh, the um, bang double equal as uh, the quality test. Right, so and and or in um, conditionals, we're used to seeing those, um, but they can be used outside of uh, conditionals. Um, if you were to return an object and the object name, what this will do is it'll actually, if object.name exists, if it's not null, it will send object.name, but if it is null, it'll send object. That way you can always return something that isn't null. If you're trying to say you've got a configuration file and you want to um, instantiate some objects based on that, if they exist, you could do something like this, where var x equals name, or if there is a configuration file with a name, we'll use that instead. That uh, is a pretty nifty shorthand, and I don't mind using it typically, but Sometimes it's easier just to write uh, um, if statements and whatnot in a context where not everybody is uh, knowledgeable about JavaScript and they might not be able to read it properly or have questions about what it does. All right. All right, we're going to talk about the, the DOM now, and that's we're going to talk about accessing the HTML elements that uh, we've been working with. In the DOM, everything is a node. So the document's a node, all of the elements, all the attributes, all the text, and even comments are all nodes. 
<coughs> um, JavaScript allows programmatic access to the elements, so we can create elements by um, using the syntax here. We're going to select the document and tell it to create this element P, and we're going to store that in this variable, paragraph. We're going to give the paragraph an ID, a content. And then we're going to add an element inside that that paragraph element. It's a text node, and it's going to say "Hello World." So we have a paragraph now that says "Hello World," but we haven't yet put it on, actually on the DOM yet, so it's not visible on the web page at this point. So you can create a whole bunch of um, elements in the background and add them to the web page when it when it's time. You would do that by um, document um, the body of the HTML and appending that child. So you're going to put that um, as the last element. So we can um, style the elements once they're on there. And uh, we're going to get our, our element, our paragraph element, by its ID content, store that as an element and then change the style and the style we're going to change is color and we're going to change that color to blue <coughs> um, so um, the other things we can do we can remove elements so here we're calling the document body and we're asking it for its child nodes and then we're asking it for only its first child node and then we're telling the document body to remove that first node. And that will um, remove the element and then shift all the elements upward. Understanding the DOM is important. Um, and uh, JavaScript is, is a good language, but it's, as you can see, document.body, uh, get element by ID. That's pretty long-winded, so um, there are a bunch of libraries we're going to look at which help us access the DOM and uh, even shorten and uh, simplify some of the other JavaScript functions um, to help us better implement the code and provide uh, maintainability. Alright, so some of the uh, more popular libraries, jQuery, Underscore, um, Backbone, and Angular are both um, JavaScript frameworks. Um, there's also uh, Lodash and uh, just a bunch more. Uh, they're fun to investigate. I, I'd like to choose a few and, and learn those really well and then you know, see what, what comes out next. Going to look at the difference here between JavaScript and using jQuery to do the same thing we did earlier. So um, we're going to get that element, that paragraph element, by its ID content. And here, the okay, the um, dollar sign is the jQuery um, reference here. So we're telling jQuery get this element um, content, the ID content. That's a lot, a lot less to write than this. Um, we can change CSS in a number of ways. We can either give it uh, CSS, the color to change, or the, the attribute to change, and what the change is, or we can pass an object to it, which would be nice um, if you have a lot of CSS to change. Um, you would normally do that when you were animating or, or something. You can change the CSS in the background and then animate to that new changed CSS. Um, some of our first nodes, this is where we re removed the first node of the body and both these lines of code can be shorthanded to um, telling the body this is a selector. Um, so 
were telling the body to look for the first child and then just remove it. So as I said before, um, the dollar sign is the global jQuery object. It has its own methods and properties, and it's a function. You can use it to call um, functions from the, uh, J the jQuery library. Um, as I said before, the uh, CSS here's an uh, example of changing two two properties at the same time, changing the background color and the text color. Many of the methods in jQuery are both getters and setters, um, just depending on the parameters. And you can chain them together. So here we're going to take a paragraph with the class need and add another class, oh my, and then show it. Um, we're assuming that this class was, or this element was also hidden previously, and we're going to show it slowly. Next time, we're going to talk about some more advanced things, so um, check out the README in the zip file for some extra reading, and uh, make sure to have all that, um, the items done in there before coming to